It's a beautiful fall day here in the upper Midwest. It is the first part of October. You can see the fall colors are just starting to pop, probably about a week away from peak. And I've got something special to share with you today, and it's right there. What I've got to share with you today is a very old example of an American chestnut tree. It is this tree right here. And if I have to pan up to get all of it into the picture here. It is a very old, beautiful specimen here of not too many of which are left in North America. I'm at the base of the tree here to give some perspective on size of this baby. As you can see, I can get my arms maybe about halfway around this thing. And it's probably about three feet in diameter at the base. 100, 150 feet tall. So this is a, a, a very large tree and it overall looks to be in very good condition. Now that's an interesting point because... As I said, not many of these are left in North America. So this is the original American chestnut. So you probably have seen plenty of other varieties of chestnuts around. But the American chestnut was uh, a huge part of the East Coast to Midwest forests um, until a blight from Asia came from one of their chestnut trees and virtually wiped these things out. Um, so if you look up on the internet, there's a American Chestnut Foundation. They're trying to breed these things um, interspecies to get a blight resistant one. And they say there are <clears throat> some left out in the wild like this one, um, but the majority of which are, are very small until they get old enough and then they get affected by the blight. So um, apparently it's, this thing's pretty rare. One of the most common ways to identify trees is by their leaves, and we can use that on the American chestnut here. So I've got an example from this tree of what that would look like. It has this distinctive five leaf combo here. And, and when we look at the individual leaves, they're a boat shaped with these saw teeth on here. That's one way we can use to identify the American chestnut, if we remember five leaves in a bunch and then each individual leaf is a boat shape with a sawtooth. All right so leaves are one way but the easiest way to tell if you have an American chestnut or you come across an American chestnut is in the fall time. So as I said this is the beginning of October. This is when it actually the chestnuts start falling off the tree. And you can see the first thing um, you can see developing up in the tree is these seed pods. They are very heavily fortified with spikes and they're a green color like this when they start growing in the tree. As they mature, they start turning, they start turning brown like this and they fall down and they open up releasing the chestnuts. Normally uh, they grow in doubles or twins and I'll show you, I'll find an example of that. All right, I've got an example of the twin here. So you can see this suspends here from the, the flower that originally was made. And these uh, chestnut pods develop off that flower. And it hangs in the tree like this. You can see it opens up and releases the chestnuts. Now, oftentimes that happens while it's still in the tree and the chestnut stall fall first but then the seed pod quickly comes after it. You can see this makes quite a mess in the lawn. Um, these are very heavily fortified and uh, very spiky. So um, I'm willing to put up with it for this tree, but it definitely is uh, something to keep in mind. And if you have one in your area and you're walking around, this will be the best sign on the ground that you've got an American chestnut. So you can tell um, a lot of other chestnuts have come to North America since these uh, have decreased because of the blight. But this seed pod is very distinctive with the large number of spikes, the brown color, and then uh, the inside is almost a velvety look to it. There's other green ones. Uh, there's other ones I've seen with very, uh, very uh, spaced out coarse spikes. But this one you'll be able to uh, 
recognize right away as the American chestnut. The last thing we're gonna look at with our American chestnut is the actual chestnut. So the old songs about roasting chestnuts on an open fire from this tree. A lot of the other chestnuts that are out there um, are not popular, not very good for eating. These are the ones you want. Um, unfortunately, what I've noticed with this tree, and I don't know if it's due to the blight or that there isn't any other chestnuts in the area of this size um, to cross pollinate with, but the majority of these chestnuts end up falling and looking like this. You see, they're very thin. They have not filled out. And so I'm assuming uh, these will not turn into a tree. And obviously you can't, there's nothing to eat here. Um, so occasionally I do find some that have filled out. And like I said, I don't know if this is a pollination issue or simply uh, the health of the tree. So some of these, or the other thing, like I said, um, animals are constantly coming under this tree, vacuuming up any nut that looks like this to get the, uh, the actual nut inside this outer shell. Deer, squirrels, uh, chipmunks, everything. This is a pr definitely a preferred food source this time of year. Even uh, the white oak, red oak, all of the other acorns, they'll leave to come after these chestnuts. And of course, um, historically speaking, this was a major food source for those animals before uh, the blight came and really reduced the numbers of these. The American chestnut was one of the most prolific trees in the eastern and midwest forests uh, before that blight. So obviously the animals adapted to this being a, a very big part of their fall food source. One last look at our American chestnut beauty. I'll get my mug out of the, the picture so you can just enjoy its grandeur. Now, one other thing to note, it's interesting, um, this tree was so prolific. One example of that is old farmhouses from the turn of the century, late 1800, mid to late 1800s. Pretty much all of the woodwork in the house would have been American chestnut. It was very, it's a great hardwood for making moldings and furniture out of.